Hello everyone, this is the Fed League Flash for Monday. Uh, pre recording this Sunday night because that's what I gotta do. Uh, I'm hoping I'm gonna feel good enough to go to work tomorrow. All right, so here we go. Um, we have one game Sunday afternoon, and Port Huron comes back and ends up handing Danbury an overtime defeat. Matt Graham scoring the overtime winner, and it's a 3-2 victory for the Port Huron Prowlers. So they go home with uh, three points. Uh, I'm sure they wanted more, but um, nonetheless, they did get three points over the course of the weekend. So in this game, um, no scoring in the first, a lot of good goaltending uh, despite the uh, the uh, net getting dislodged a million times, uh, Ron Rogel's uh, whiteboard is the second most famous whiteboard in the Fed now. <laughs> All right, so no scoring the first in the second period. Evan Foley gets the Prowlers on the board at six thirty-two. Jared Yao scores on a power play goal with Alex Johnson in the box at twelve. 13. And so it's 1-1 after 2. Uh, at this point of the game, the shots were 26 to 20 in favor of Danbury. So uh, a lot of good action in the game. Uh, in the third period, uh, Soisewski scores to put Danbury up 2-1. It's that's a, that's at the 726 mark. Um, and uh, Brian Parsons he counters at 14.47 in the third, and so it's 2-2. Two, two, uh, a lot of uh, crazy action the last two minutes, but nobody can put the puck home. So we go to overtime, and in overtime, uh, Matt Graham ends up stuffing home a loose puck on a big rush at 2.12 to give Port Huron the win. So yeah, Graham with the game-winning goal, plus an assist. Um, he now needs 36 more points to reach the 500 plateau. So hopefully he'll be playing again next year. Uh, we'll see that. Uh, Evan Foley gets a goal. Uh, Ian Wallace, 36 saves. Um, as the game went on, he looked better and better. And, uh, yeah, it, it was a good game. Um, not to be outdone, uh, Liam Murray... He played very, very well as well, uh, 35 of 38 in saves. And uh, Yao with the power play goal along with Stoiseski scoring. So, yeah, uh, so shots were 38 aside at the end, uh, but Port Huron gets the extra point and uh, gets us to this point, which is our standing. So I'm going to make this kind of quick because it's been a rough weekend. All right, so... Uh, the teams that are in black have clinched a playoff spot, that being Columbus, Carolina, and Binghamton. So, yeah, we can see where they are stacked. Uh, of course, um, I, I've seen some people say I can't make sense of the standings on the Fed site. So, yeah, very simply, wins, uh, losses, overtime losses, points. Three tiebreakers are first points, then regulation wins, and then winning percentage. And that simplifies it. That's all you need. So that's what you got here. All right. So uh, Columbus looking like they are probably going to end up as the number one seed in the uh, Saskin division. Uh, Columbus, of course, being the only non-Saskin team, ironically. But uh, anyway, uh, Carolina... Uh, despite a rough weekend, uh, you know, they dropped two of three to Baton Rouge, uh, but they are still solidly in second place. They have uh, a nice 19-point uh, cushion between them and Port Huron. Uh, Port Huron now has a full three-game or nine-point edge on Mississippi for the third spot. Um so uh, right now, uh, when we get in the playoffs, it'll be the two and three seeds facing off and the one and four. 
So like right now, if the playoffs were to start tomorrow, it would be Columbus playing Mississippi and Carolina playing the Prowlers. But anyway, um, not to overlook the last two teams. Um, Blue Ridge, 15 points. Yeah, they need to make up 15 points in uh, 15 games. That's doable. Um, they have to put together some consistent win streaks, though. But uh, Blue Ridge is still in the picture. Not sure how much in the picture Baton Rouge is, but uh, they played well this weekend. Uh, yes, I know the one game was against uh, a patchwork team, but uh, Saturday, uh, all of Carolina was there. The regular roster was there, and Baton Rouge controlled the game. So uh, good things happening. And uh, now every team in the league has 10 wins. We haven't seen that in a long, long time. Not since before the Rumblebees. Uh, so uh, it's pretty good. All right. In the Empire Division, Binghamton, uh, obviously in first now uh, with a 15-point edge over Motor City. Motor City is the next team. Uh, or the next closest team to clinching a spot, their magic number right now is 12, for those of you who are wondering. Uh, so that's four regulation wins. Uh, Motor City, uh, 73 points. Uh, they've got a thin edge over Danbury, who are just six points behind. That's one weekend. Uh, Danbury, uh, 23, 16, and 5, 67 points. So, yeah, now we've got six teams that are above 500 in the winning percentage, which that's interesting, too. Elmira, uh, still hanging in there. Uh, they've got some work to do if they want to move up the standings, but they do still have a seven-point cushion over Watertown despite losing to the Wolves on Saturday. Uh, Watertown still looking to make up ground there. All right, so there you go. Of course, yeah, if you're in blue, you're on the outside looking in right now. Red teams in a playoff spot but haven't clinched yet. Black teams, they've clinched. All right, so there we go. Uh, five stars of the week are top performers. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to add a new name this week. Uh, first, Dawson Baker. He had himself three goals and an assist. Baker now has a six-game goal streak. Um, so very, very nice. Ever since he came back down from the SP, he's been uh, he's been lighting the lamp. All right, uh, Scott Koash for the Motor City Rockers, also three goals and an assist in two games against the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Um, the usual steady performance from Koash. Of course, he's Motor City's leading scorer. Um, Matt Graham, well, we talked about him earlier. Yeah, he had that game-winning goal. He ended up with two goals and three assists on the weekend in the three games versus the Port, uh, against the, uh, Danbury Hattricks. And the one game he didn't have anything. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, a goal and two assists on Friday and then today or Sunday, he had two goals. Or he had uh, the game-winning goal and an assist. So, good weekend for Matt Graham. Also, uh, Josh LaBelle. He has been red hot in the last three, four weeks. Uh, he had himself another three goals and an assist as well. And then our new name for the week. Yep. I went through all the numbers, looked at all the goalie performances, and the one that impressed me the most was Bailey Stevens from the Baton Rouge Zydeco. Uh, in two games, 65 saves, 69 shots. Um, that included on Saturday a 44 save performance. Uh, so over the weekend, he had a 942 save percentage. Um, that's a 2.00 goals against, and he had himself an assist on Saturday night as well. So really, really good weekend for Billy Stevens. It's good to see something good happen for the Zydeco. And uh, 
so yeah, Stevens is our goalie of the week. All right, so that is it. That is our game recap, the weekend uh, weekend wrap up, our standings and our stars, and that is it. And uh, so, yeah, this will get posted Monday morning. And uh, next time I'll be with you is Tuesday on Spotify. We'll do uh, news and notes as well as week 21 power rankings. All right. Thank you so much for watching, for tuning in. Make sure you hit like and subscribe down below. Tell a friend uh, as well. Um, Pass the word along that I'm here doing this despite not feeling good. All right. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you next weekend here on YouTube. We'll catch you on Spotify on Tuesday.